Hi, I'm Congressman and Katie Porter, and today I have with me Wendell Potter. He has been a leader um, in being willing to talk about how health insurance companies are wronging um, those who seek coverage, and he knows it from the inside, having himself work for a big health insurer. So what we wanted to do today is thank you for being here and ask if we could talk a little bit about Medicare Advantage. Absolutely. I appreciate the opportunity. I, I used to work for Humana and Cigna, both big insurance companies, both involved in Medicare Advantage. So I, I saw up close exactly how these companies and other companies are really ripping off taxpayers and cheating a lot of Americans out of the care that they need. Let's talk about what's actually the differences between them and how people might understand what the costs and choices and disadvantages are between traditional Medicare and Medicare Advantage because they are very, very different. They're despite very different. sharing that confusing name of Medicare. In a Medicare Advantage plan, what you are doing when you're enrolling that is, is, is enrolling in a private plan with all the problems of private health insurance that's not even known in the traditional Medicare program. You have to jump through all kinds of hoops to get the care you need in many cases. So traditional Medicare is your government, um, governments you, you pay in and government reimburses your provider. That's right. Correct? Yeah. Okay. So there's no profit motive in that. You've paid in, the government has the Medicare dollars. When you get sick, you go to the doctor, you get treatment, Medicare pays. Medicare Advantage, let me ask you the most basic question. Why would a huge health insurance company, let's use United Healthcare, why would they offer Medicare Advantage plans? A lot of profits. It's become their biggest cash cow in many cases. They get even more money from the Medicare Advantage program than they do from uh, the commercial health insurance plans because no wait you're saying medicare advantage is even more profitable than traditional health insurance oh absolutely if uh, if oh yes for sure it's a lot more profitable because they figured out how to rig the system how to try to uh, convince uh, the government that the people who enrolled in their plans are sicker than they really are and the government pays them more because of that they've been paid billions and billions of dollars more every year than they're entitled to. And you don't have to take just Wendell's word for this. This has been front page news on yes. the New York Times, on the Wall Street Journal. Virtually every paper has said this is happening to the tunes of billions and billions of dollars. All right, let's talk about administrative expenses. Um, traditional Medicare spends about 1.3%, 1.3% of its money on administration. So think about the processing the claims and the cutting the checks or resetting the deposits. Um, what does Medicare Advantage spend in terms of administrative costs? Oh, it's far more than that. It's about 17%. Um, and a lot of that is in, in includes profits uh, and pay to the big CEOs, the CEOs of these big companies and their top executives. And in a hearing that we had about um, Medicare, I actually demonstrated this using dollar bills. So if I pay my insurance company $100, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 dollars go to administrative costs. Okay, now Medicare Advantage is very quick to tout its benefits. And it's true, there are some things that Medicare Advantage can provide that traditional Medicare doesn't, that people need to look at the whole picture. So let's talk about this when it comes to prescription drugs. For traditional Medicare, is it right? Is it alphabet soup here of, of Medicare? But I need to go get something called Part D. Is that correct? That's right. Part D, you have to buy separately if you have Medicare, uh, and that's an expense. Mm -hmm. uh, it is. And Medicare Advantage plans do incorporate a prescription drug. Benefit. So it's included. Yeah. Um, supplemental, this usually refers to things beyond the traditional doctors and healthcare. Right. So the big ones that I think I hear about and I fought to try to expand traditional Medicare to cover are vision, dental, and hearing. Very important. Does every Medicare, some Medicare Advantage plans include those things? Do they all include all of it? How good is no. that covering? It, it, you have to check because uh, it's hard to determine exactly how valuable those benefits are. And not all of them offer those extra benefits. Most of them do. Uh, but you might find that in many cases they're just discounts or not very good coverage. And that's particularly true for dental insurance. You uh, are going to be likely paying a lot out of your own pockets. They advertise them heavily, as you mentioned, uh, because that's a big selling point. But seniors should know that in many cases those benefits are very paltry. And so like I could have a very high copay yes. or have very limited. So maybe I have 
dental, but it only covers a couple hundred dollars That's right. worth of services, and, it, and I would still be winding up out of pocket. Yeah. Okay, so it's again, I think really important when you're dealing with Medicare Advantage to remember you're dealing with a private health insurance company. So you should approach um, advertisements, you should approach their pitch with the same skepticism you would use when you're buying a used car, which is to read the fine print, really assess the claims that are being made. Exactly. If the government tells you that something is included, it doesn't have any incentive because there's no profit motive to mislead you on it. You're right, and I think we're getting that in the category here of the things they don't tell you about in those advertisements. And these are big, and these are really personal to me. My dad um, has a rare form of cancer, um, and his oncologist, he has, my dad is over 65, and he got a Medicare Advantage plan. He didn't ask me. He got what I call Medicare Disadvantage. And when he got this rare form of cancer, his oncologist, within his limited network, mm -hmm. which is what comes with Medicare Advantage, is a limited network, his oncologist had never treated this form of cancer. So I wanted my dad, we live really close, my dad lives in Iowa, it's close to Mayo Clinic, it's close to the University of Iowa. These, these, these world-class facilities have oncologists who've treated his cancer, but he couldn't go. My mom did the same thing. She enrolled in a Medicare Advantage plan. She broke her hip, needed to have skilled nursing care and rehab. The network was so bad that we, we, we disenrolled her and, and she got back in traditional Medicare, which I know saved her life. Yeah. That happens a lot. Uh, when you get older, you'll find in many cases that the facilities and the doctors you need are just not in network. And uh, I think people, frankly, uh, are, are dying or increasingly getting out of Medicare Advantage, going into traditional Medicare, uh, in, their, in their later years, and that's costing taxpayers even more because they're, being, they're going back into tr traditional Medicare and these private insurers are off the hook for, their, for the rest of their care. Talk more about this because with Medicare Advantage, if I want to walk in and see a specialist, can I do that? Uh, on Medicare Advantage, not necessarily. You might need to have a referral. It depends on the type of plan you have. They talk about alphabet soup. You can have an HMO or a PPO and you really under, have to read the fine print to know whether you'll have to have a referral or not. Chances are you will, and you'll find that in many cases, the doctor or hospital you need or want to go to is not in that work or might not be next, next year. Yeah, I think one of the important things for people to remember about traditional Medicare is there is no private insurance plan, yeah. whether it's through employers, for people who are working, or through Medicare Advantage. There is no private insurance that has the breadth of providers and the yeah. choice of traditional Medicare. So yeah. that's a very important thing that you have to think through, um, as, you know, particularly if you live in a rural area, if you live in an area yeah. with more limited networks. So I really, I think really the um, point of this part is buyer beware, understand right. that they're selling you something and they're getting rich doing it. They're getting and rich so doing it. they have an incentive to push the benefits and hide the restrictions, and I think Congress needs to be doing more um, to to both reform this program, Medicare Advantage, or to eliminate it, yeah. um, and to make the advertising of it more clear. So one of my colleagues has a bill that would not allow private insurance companies mm -hmm. to market these plans as Medicare because it's confusing to people. Uh, um, we've also had conversations about trying to expand traditional Medicare. So things like the vet dental or the vision are not pushing people to make, they have to choose between being able to get the, the health care they need for their body or the care that they need for their eyes or vision um, or hearing. Congresswoman, you have just introduced a bill that will address some of the problems with the Medicare Advantage program. Can you explain what the bill does and why you introduced it? Yes, the bill is called the Medicare Advantage Consumer Protection and Transparency Act, and that's a mouthful. But what it does is really simple. It gives data to the government, requires these private companies that are offering Medicare Advantage to give data to the government so that we can figure out if they're actually following the rules of Medicare or if they're overcharging taxpayers and if they're shorting seniors on care. We talked about how Medicare Advantage requires you to stay in network. We don't know how big these networks are. This bill would give data to government so we can see how serious those problems are. It would also increase penalties for Medicare Advantage plans that are cheating patients because this has been ongoing for a number of years 
and we need to make it, we need to put a stop to it. And that starts with having the stronger teeth in the enforcement piece. I asked the director of the Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services what data there is, what evidence there is that Medicare Advantage either costs taxpayers less or improves outcomes for patients. I mean, I, I'm willing to take either or. I think we should be aiming for both. But I asked her to tell me about that data. And do you know what she said? None. There's none. There is no data. And there's actually a lot of data pointing the other direction yeah. that Medicare Advantage actually costs us more and produces worse patient outcomes. So I guess I really struggle, Wendell, and I, I think I know the answer to this, but as someone who's worked for a big insurance company and dealt a lot with Congress, why on earth does the government continue to have Medicare Advantage to continue to expand or tweak it when it isn't making care either cheaper or better? The reason is because they're able to spend so much money on lobbyists, on advertising, just last year. Uh, they spent millions of dollars, largely here in, in Washington, D.C., uh, trying to scare lawmakers away from even reducing some of the overcharges. And the money that you could save from these overpayments, getting rid of some of this excess administrative expense, you could easily improve to traditional Medicare. You could add dental vision and hearing. Yeah. You could do a That's lot. That's what's most galling yeah. about it. I want to emphasize that is that we have the dollars yeah. in this system to deliver the benefits of Medicare Advantage within traditional Medicare if we cut that profit motive out, yeah. if we stop putting private health insurance companies in charge of our Medicare system. So let me close. If I'm watching this or I had I signed up for Medicare Advantage, you know, well, late night TV ads got to me. And now I'm running into problems. I, I can't go see the nurses or the doctors I want to see. My, my, I thought I would get my drugs covered, but they're not covered. Can people switch? You can switch, but beware because you can switch. But when you're first eligible for Medicare, you can enroll in a supplemental plan without underwriting. In other words, you can be guaranteed to get an affordable, for most people, supplemental policy. If you enroll in Medicare Advantage and then want to switch back, uh, you might not be able to get one that you can afford because then you'll be, you'll be subject to underwriting. They may charge you more than you can possibly afford. So there's danger there. Yeah, so I would just say to people, I mean, you're talking to two people here who know a lot about this and are pretty passionate about why traditional Medicare is the right choice for most seniors, but you're also talking to two people whose parents enrolled in Medicare Advantage. Right. So there, I think it's really important that if you know someone who's approaching that age, I mean, I'm 49, it feels a long ways away, but I, I'm really working to educate myself to make those good decisions. So um, thank you very much for being part of the conversation, Wendell. It's always such a pleasure. Thank you, Congresswoman.